We're going to have a look at the camp today. We're going to have a look at the lumber mill, the mine, the farmland and cooking and we'll see what we get. Um, I haven't looked into the other two yet, can't open them up. So as soon as I do, I'll drop a video in about that. But other than that, let's jump into it and have a look. So as per normal, as soon as anything new drops, you get given like a basic tutorial. One of the characters comes up and walks you through everything. In this case today, we've got Rex joining us and he's going to slowly walk us through the camp, how to set up things and that sort of thing. Um, then we'll have a look in detail about each, each part that we build and we can have a look at what we do, what we need, that sort of thing. So Estrid and a big axe are going to run the mill for us and it just takes a couple of seconds to set that up and we get this little dusty icon with the uh, the axe going everywhere and that is the same thing as you get whenever you level the item up as well so whenever you level the mill up you'll you'll see this dusty thing and then you click on the um the little tick above it and that will actually place it into the build function for us so then it pops up onto your um your camp and you can go in and have a look at it so when we jump in first our mill is obviously level one <coughs> And then the first thing we can do is birch wood. So birch wood comes in at 20 gold. It costs us to produce and it takes two minutes to produce one. So it's the same sort of thing when we set the mine up, go over, click on her and she opens up the mine and she starts mining away for us or starts building the mine. Then once the mine's built, we click on our little tick arrow, up it pops and we've now got a new mine going away for us. So the mine is level one. And then when we go into the mine, we're greeted by Valk and she's going to take us through the bits in the mine. It's not massively complicated, but essentially they start excavating the mine and they bring up um, ore for us. So that's the mine sort of done. And then we've got the actual commander of the camp now. And this is where you sort of do up your camp's level. So the first camp's level is level one. And you've got to reach a mine of level one and a mill of level one, and then we can upgrade it. Uh, the only other thing is there is a requirement, so we actually need some ore to upgrade it as well. So as soon as we click out of here, we'll then be able to go to the mine, we'll be able to collect our ore, and then we can upgrade it. So for upgrading it, we do actually get rewards for actually doing that as well. In this case, we get an Insignia 2 chest, so there'll be a couple of Insignias in there, and then there's a couple of levels we can go up. And then as we get to level 4, that's when we get Farmland and Cooking, and and then it maxes out at level 10. I think it's level 6 where we get the uh, the harbour and the trading hall. Although I haven't reached those two yet. Hopefully by tomorrow they'll be reached and we can have a look at those to see what we get from them. So if we run over to our mine and we claim our resources our mine. We've got three all there at the moment as we can see. And we're just excavating another little load. So we'll probably get another bit of all there. And you can collect that as well. So we're up to now four. We can claim all of those and then we can go over and upgrade our camp. We can go over to our camp now that we've got our ore, we can upgrade our camp. So our camp go from level one to level two. And there we see we can also then upgrade the lumber mill and we can upgrade our mine if we want to. And we get some rewards, which are all quite nice. So we use our wood to upgrade our mine and we use ore to upgrade the lumber mill, which is completely obvious. That's obviously the way you would do things. So let's upgrade the mine with the wood that we've got. So once the mine's upgraded, then it changes the resources that you get from it. The time seems to remain very much the same, but the resources you get from it are mildly different. So once they finish doing the upgrade, there we are, we click on the little arrow and then it then appears and the mining carries on and we're mine level two. Now, We'll have a look at the mine in more depth later, but it has got a maximum storage capacity, so it just keeps farming out stuff for us. Now that we've upgraded it, let's go and have a look at the lumber mill. Now, as soon as you have enough ore, that's when you can actually go and upgrade your lumber mill. You'll upgrade it from level one to level two, and it will take a couple of seconds for it to happen. Now, the 
the dust cloud arrives and the axe goes backwards and forwards as it does its animation into the rebuilding of the lumber mill. I'm assuming as you go up in levels, the time span between the rebuild takes longer and longer. But once the green arrow's there, we can click it and we're done. And our new lumber mill, level two. Right, let's go and have a look at these things in depth now so we can actually see what they do for us. So what does the mine actually do then? Well, in the introduction, the facility description, the mine continuously produces ore for construction. Upgrading the mine level will enhance its production efficiency. The mine has a chance to unearth rare items. As the mine level increases, the variety of rare items that can be discovered will also expand. The mine has a maximum storage capacity. When the mine reaches its storage limit, it will cease operations. So please remember to claim uh, the items excavated. Once claimed, the mine will resume operation. Right, let's go and have a look at it. So level one, it's quartz. Level two, it's golden quartz. Three, they add on experience. Four, we get to start to see the new ore, which is pig iron. And then level five, we actually start to chuck in redstone ore for us as well, which I presume is another building material. And then when we hit level six, we start to get energy put in. Uh, seven, it's diamonds. And now level eight, I really like, because that's got mithril attached to it. I do hope we start getting some more mithril. That would be really handy. And it does seem sensible it would come from a mine. So that does sort of make sense. But from nine and 10, the items you get remain the same. I'm presuming the drop rates are just somewhat slightly different. Now, if we have a look at the bottom left of this, the mining screen, we can see the uh, excavation process. That has always been a minute for me. So level one, level two was always a minute. Um, and then on the right hand side is the capacity. So the maximum storage capacity at well, level one was two hours. And then at level two was two hours 30. Now, whether this is a constant 30 minutes upgrade, and whether it's 30 minutes every level, I don't know at the moment. I'm sure we'll find out soon. Um, something to say when I was at level two, um, the gold was, I was getting gold two and a half times more often than I was getting quartz. No one ever had a shortage of quartz, but the game's only just started, so I don't really know. But I found I could level everything up, and it's a very small sample base, but I'm just saying that I got quartz less, much less often than I got gold. So let's jump in now and have a look at the lumber mill. So this gives us our wood and uh, we use this to do our upgrades. I'm assuming we use it later for trading because otherwise once we've upgraded everything to max it's just useless. So I presume it's used for that, I don't know. Now on the left hand side we can schedule the work we want done and the work is carried out in the order that you lay it down on the left hand side. You start with four slots but there are more later on in the game. On the right hand side is the wood that you can make. You can start off by making one and then it's uh, like a bundle of that wood and that goes on and on. So on the, on the right hand side, we get different woods as we go up level and different amounts of it. The different amounts cost different amounts of gold and different times as well. So you'll be able to tie that in with your needs and requirements and then select it. We'll go on the left hand side for production. Now, if you cancel the production on the left hand side, you get reimbursed whatever it costs you, whatever resources it costs you, on the assumption that production has not started. If the production has started, you've lost what resources you put in. At the moment, I'm, I think it's only gold, but I don't know what the future holds. So just be aware of that. So let's jump back into the camp. Now the camp level reflects your camp's development and growth and determines the maximum level of your facilities. Upgrading your camp unlocks new feature and raises the level cap for each of them. To increase your camp level, you need to complete the relevant quests and collect enough materials required for the upgrade. Increasing a level each time grants a level up gift pack. So with that being done, let's level up our camp from level three to level four, and then we'll get the uh, the rewards there as well. And if you're wondering where the chest goes, it goes into storage, so you can open that up later on at your time, but we'll have a look at that again. So we're now level four, and that opens up some more stuff for us. So we've got the chefs come on board, have days welcome, so we'll be able to start the cooking hopefully soon. And then we've also got the farm as well. Okay, so cooking. 
Uh, cooking stove allows you to prepare dishes, which is nice, but we need six pumpkins to be able to do that. So I assume that's at the farm then. Uh, farm, we need some more ore before we can create that. So, right, let's get that sorted then. So now we've got the ore, we can construct our farm. Nice big area, axes going everywhere, and that's that done. So let's have a look at what we've got. So let's jump into the farm. Farmland, a new facility unlocked. Good, now let's have a look. Pumpkins, uh, take one hour to do, 700 gold, but we get six to go. So that's worked out nice then. So in an hour's time, we'll have enough to construct the cooking. So while we've got some time to kill, let's have a look at the farm. Uh, introduction, you're now free to grow any crop on the farmland which needs to be unlocked first. There are a total of four pieces of farmland available. Upgrading the farmland will unlock more varieties of crops. Once you have planted your crops, they begin to grow. You can uproot crops that are currently growing, but you will not be refunded the items used for planting. So that's much the same as the, uh, the lumber mill as well. Right. So if we click on a pumpkin, we then can see what it's used for. Orange and juicy, sweet with a hint of fragrance, ideal for healthy eating. And then it's got four dishes underneath it. However, we can't see what the dishes do. So hopefully when in an hour's time when we've got the, uh, the the cooking sorted that will open up for us and also we can't upgrade this until we've got the mine at level four right so there's a couple of bits to do let's get on and get them done so our six pumpkins are now made let's go and grab those and then we can start to construct the uh the cooking and we can see what's actually available for us now oh now that's weird right so that's obvious actually you plant in the land and therefore they all grow at the same time i've made a mistake there so don't make this mistake fill that straight up straight away and then you can have them all growing at the same time that's why only one quarter of it was done when i went to collect it just want to look at the lumber mill i haven't made the same yeah right so the lumber mill they run in order whereas the farm they all grow at the same time whatever you've got there right so now that's out of the way don't make the same mistake i've made and then in an hour's time I'll come back and get all four. Right, so that should produce more food for us which is going to be handy I presume. Right, cooking. Let's jump in and have a look at the cooking. So, to get this constructed at the speed of light. There we go. And we've got a bigger campfire and there she is all cooking away. So we can now prepare a variety of tasty dishes replacing stamina and um, XP, right then. So number one. So roasted pumpkin effect grants 340 to 400 hero experience potions. Potions, 340 to 400 potions. I wonder if that means points as opposed to potions. But we'll, we'll find out soon, I should imagine. So there we go. Then next up on the list, we've got our roasted vegetables, which grants two to four stamina. Okay, so there's another way to get stamina in the game. That's that's never shy. Wonder if that goes straight on or whether that's stored somewhere. And next up, we've got salad, 1,300 to 1,500 hero experience potions. Next up, village stew grants five to eight stamina. So then our cream of mushroom soup. A BLT sandwich, sweet pumpkin soup, uh, tasty stewed meat, stewed veggie soup, shrimp burrito, seafood pasta. All of these dishes are required by the trading hall. So what we get for them, we can't quite see yet, but hopefully in a few days, we'll actually find that out. So next up, we've got the epic foods. We have got grilled shrimp skewer, which grants 5,300, 5,500 hero XP potions. And then we've got the stamina, which jumps up to 16 to 20 stamina, or savory beef stew. And then I am assuming, yeah, the savory fried meat chop, coconut bread, pumpkin pie, and sweet corn. Melody, they are all for the trading hall again. So that lastly brings us on to the legendary stuff. So Curried Crab does 12,000 to 12,500 hero experience potions. And then we've got 
25 to 28 stamina for corn chowder and then it's seafood platter curried beef deluxe veg salad uh, mold wine and lastly exquisite grilled steak and all of those are required by the trading halls so later on we'll find out what they are required for thank you very much so a couple of things before I go um, your storage or your chest rewards from leveling up your your hall or, or camp so I go in here into your storage so you'll be able to get those and there's also a tab now for dishes so I assume you can save all your dishes so all that stamina and that sort of thing will that be available can you stockpile it for going into levels or when you've got events coming up that sort of thing who knows but we'll, we'll find out over the next coming days I should imagine something else i mentioned at the beginning i have looked back into it so as you've been leveling up my mine it has been going up by 30 minutes the uh the maximum capacity however the excavation time has come down a bit so as you level up you do seem to get different wards going on with the mine uh, remember when you're using the lumber mill you can put your four or more bits depending on when you get it leveled up down in order and then they will do them in order one at a time as opposed to the farm that do all of these things at the same time so learn from my mistake when you're doing the farm fill it all up and not one at a time just for what you think you need now the only uh, two other things I want to quickly mention is when you're leveling up your your camp in its in its entirety when you go to the camp level it gives you varying different quests to do now at the moment the quests I've got to do I just level up some bits around the farm cook some dishes but it also says clear campaign stage 9-8 so I don't know if it's going to push you on further into the campaign or not, but something to keep an eye on for the future. Now lastly, around the campfire, I can't seem to get into Tide anymore. I had to do it through the quest. So I went to my quest, so I quit, do the quest, and it took me to Tide. However, I can't seem to find the person to take you there anymore. It seems to have vanished. So I will try and find him later. Alright, if you found the video helpful, please leave us a thumbs up, like and subscribe. That would help me out massively and I'll see you all in a video again soon. Cheers for your time. Goodbye. Happy gaming.